11 May 1945. The mighty beast of steel pushed onward relentlessly through the assault of the crashing waves of the Great Sea. Carrying over 90 aircraft, the USS Bunker Hill steamed through the Pacific Ocean towards its destination. Guided by a crew of 2,600 of the Navy's finest young men, it would reach Okinawa in the morning to deliver what could be the deciding strike to end the war. In the depths of the great ship, Radio Man 2nd Class Raymond Hector Fasano worked diligently in the communications room, relaying their position to other ships in the Allied fleet. Born June 22, 1923, he was a rising star in the Yankees minor league baseball team when he answered the call of duty for his nation, enlisting in the Navy at age 20. As sunlight's rays appeared over the horizon, the ship sailed ever closer to danger. Most of the crewmen were on edge. Although the carrier had been in service for several years, it was the first time many of them would see combat. Everyone waited nervously at their stations for the inevitable assault. Even in the communications room, Raymond could hear and feel the pounding as Bunker Hill's guns opened fire. A devastating battery of 12 5-inch cannons, with an array of smaller guns for protection from the Japanese aircraft that darted and dove overhead. The floor rumbled as America's own planes thundered down the runway to join the battle. The crewmen in the upper decks manning the 20mm anti-aircraft guns skillfully tracked the enemy planes, laying down a curtain of fire that ripped apart anyone who dared to attempt to breach it. Suddenly, a low cloud over the bow parted to reveal a Japanese Zero, whose pilot had somehow evaded the fleet's fire. Skimming the flight deck, it dropped its 250kg payload and crashed into the ship, igniting the planes on the deck. Less than half a minute later, a second plane broke through, dropping its bomb and crashing into the base of the control tower. Gasoline fires and explosions sprung up all over the deck. The temperature was rising rapidly in the communications room. While others evacuated the confines of the lower decks, Raymond stayed as ordered, dispatching a distress call to all ships in the area. As he frantically operated the radio, the fires consumed him. Radio man second class Raymond Hector Fasano was buried at sea. All of the ships stood still as they honored the countless young heroes who gave their lives for their country. And for the first time for days, all was silent.